At issue was whether the Stingray had violated the rights of innocent people caught in its dragnet surveillance. One of the problems with the Stingray technology is that when the police or anybody else are using it to gather information about communications about one individual, who is, as you say, a suspect, um, they are also at least potentially gathering similar information from dozens or even hundreds of people who happen to be in the proximity of the device that they're using. The judge in the dark about Stingray technology was concerned about its bulk collection of innocent third-party information. The judge asked the AUSA what was effectively a rhetorical question. Um, counsel, do you think Judge Seaborg would have wanted to know that an MC catcher picks up third-party information, which was then followed by a very long and awkward pause. And then the AUSA eventually returning to the microphone and simply saying, yes, Your Honor. In open court, Daniel Rigmaiden had forced a secret surveillance technology into the light of day and had unknowingly ignited a heated debate about its use. Rick Smith is a former FBI agent who agreed to go on the record defending the Stingray. You have to look at the big picture. There's terrorism, there's criminal acts and inter enterprise out there. And if you can acquire the information necessary to identify where somebody is, you want to use it. Technology is able to pinpoint where people are. That's a tremendous achievement to have when you're talking about terrorism or criminal acts or finding missing people. But judges across the United States are beginning to suspect they aren't being told the whole story. Many are echoing concerns over the tracking of innocent people's cell phones, asking, where should we draw the line? 